Hi, this is David at Mash OT. Following on from our recent review of the uh, X1 Nano, we've had a number of people asking us if we could just open it up and take a look at the internals. So tonight we're just going to spin this over, we're going to open it up, look inside, I might have a quick look and see if I can test the one slot and see if I can get an SSD in there, and uh, we'll have a look at the actual thermal solution. So first thing I'm doing is removing the SIM tray, and we need to unscrew five screws, Phillips head screws. Now these are captive screws, and the actual tray pops away as we're unscrewing, so hopefully that makes lifting it off quite easy. Right, so here we are in the internals. You can see I have a one card populated already, uh, Fibercon, and I was planning on using this, so I was quite happy this was already installed, but at 2,000 pounds, I kind of expected all the sort of uh, extras with the laptop. You can see we've got a single heat pipe, it's quite thick, and it's going right across the side of the laptop, pumping the hot air out the side. And here is the fan. I can't see a lot of air intake on this fan, so I'm not sure where it's pulling its air in from. Hopefully around the sides or something. And then we have the SSD over here with a nice heat plate over it. Now the Wi-Fi 6 card is actually soldered onto the motherboard, so you won't be able to change that. So the only options we've got is obviously we can change the fiber card. We're going to see if we can get an SSD to work in this actual slot. And we've also got a 42 millimeter M.2, which we can upgrade. I'm going to open that up and take a look at the SSD we've got in here. Okay, so we've got a Western Digital uh, SN530 NVMe SSD. I'm not sure if you'll be able to focus on that, but it's a 42 millimeter M.2 NVMe SSD. And what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna see if I can get this to boot in the WAN slot. Okay, so removing the WAN card, we can see that the NVMe Western Digital SSD that we've got, the 42 millimeter, doesn't fit this uh, connector type. So I'm going to have a quick look at what this is. It's probably going to be a Type B connector and try and find out if we can find a matching SSD to upgrade that with later on. But at the moment, I was hoping we might be able to just take that SSD out and try it in this slot, but you can't, which is a real shame. So I'm going to put this back together now. Now, if anyone can confirm what this uh, connector type is, whether it is a Type B, can you let us know in the comments down below, it'd be really helpful, so I can then try and get that uh, SSD in to test that slot. And at the bottom of the battery here, we've got the two downward firing speakers as well, which we talked about in our review. So that's why it's got pretty good sound. So you've got the downward and the upward firing speakers. Battery is, takes up pretty much the entire bottom part of the actual chassis. Looks like it's quite easy to remove it, it's good, so you can replace it in the future. They haven't soldered that in or you know, glued it in like Apple, so that's good news. And this battery has got a rating of 48.2 watt hours. Now I hope you found this video useful. I'm just gonna put this back together now, clip it back in. Uh, if you've got any other questions, if there's anything else you would like me to look at, please let us know and we'll do our best for you. So opening this up and closing it is very easy. As I say, it's just the five screws and a couple of little tabs at the front. So when you do take this cover off, lift it towards you and then pull it away. Um, and then when you put it back in, you just slide it straight into the tabs inset to the correct places and screw it down. That's it. So it's a nice and easy one to get into. Not that there's much to change inside, but at least it is easy to actually get in there.